Technical illustrators often create exploded view diagrams to expose the structure of 3D objects like this master cylinder. But a static diagram can be ambiguous. The viewer must mentally determine how parts relate to one another spatially and how they fit together. This is especially difficult when the object contains lots of parts. Our goal is to create interactive rather than static exploded views that allow viewers to see how parts fit together by directly expanding and collapsing the parts. Via interaction, viewers can also focus in on a particular set of parts to better understand how they interact with and constrain one another. One important component of our system is an authoring interface that allows users to quickly create interactive exploded views from a single 2D input image of the object in its fully exploded state, such as the one shown here. The first step is to segment the image into parts using an intelligent scissors tool similar to Photoshop's magnetic lasso. Once all the parts have been cut out, the author draws freeform strokes to organize the parts into stacks that will expand and collapse along the same explosion axis. By default, the system sets the explosion axis to the line connecting the centers of the first and last parts in the stack, as shown here. If necessary, the user can then interactively adjust the axis. The system also sets default values for the fully exploded and fully collapsed positions of each part. In this case, the default collapsed positions leave the parts too far from each other. Here, the user modifies the default so that the object collapses in the desired way. Next, the parts are layered to maintain the proper occlusion relationships as the stacks are expanded and collapsed. Note that for interlocking parts like the bottom two shown here, a naive layering that simply puts one part on top of the other produces an incorrect result. Interlocking parts must be partitioned into fragments for the layering to appear correct. Although the author can manually fragment the parts using intelligent scissors, we also provide a semi-automated fragmentation tool to help the user with this task. The author first sketches the closed boundary of the cavity that encloses the inner part. Given the relationship between the explosion axis and the viewing direction, our system automatically finds the portion of the boundary curve that occludes the internal parts, shown here in blue. The system then extrudes the occlusion boundary along the explosion axis. Pixels lying within the extrusion are treated as a front fragment, again shown in blue, while the others are treated as a back fragment. Once the parts are fragmented, we use constraint satisfaction techniques to automatically assign depth to each part or fragment. Finally, the user can annotate the diagram with labels and guidelines. To add a label, the user first specifies the appropriate label text. Next, the user clicks to set an anchor point, and then drags the label to the desired position. The system keeps the offset between the label and its anchor constant, so that the label moves rigidly with its corresponding part. To add a guideline, the user selects two parts and simply drags out a line that connects them in the desired way. Once the diagram has been created, the user can examine it in our viewing interface, which supports a few simple but useful interactions. For instance, users can see a diagram expand and collapse dynamically. The viewer can also interactively manipulate individual stacks. In this diagram of a master cylinder, the user expands and collapses stacks by dragging selected parts. Note that to reduce visual clutter, we only display labels whose anchors are not occluded by other parts. The user can also choose to turn off labels and guidelines. This phone contains lots of internal structure. Let's say we want to find a particular part, like this speaker. Instead of visually searching through the diagram, our interface allows the viewer to do a simple text search, as shown here. This last example shows a car rendered using markers. Note that the labels here have been positioned within the parts. 